I, I'm thrilled and delighted to introduce Phelan. Come on up. So exciting. And really, two non-Americans who are some of the biggest voices protecting our truths, our liberties, our freedom. Phelan, thank you. Thank you. I didn't, I'm not Clint Eastwood. I haven't brought an empty chair. It's just, <laughs> I just, I was taking notes as Trevor was speaking and I just, I just, you know, I, I sort of rewrote my whole speech because <laughs> of what Trevor had said. So uh, <laughs> thank you, Trevor. So I'm going to refer to this. Hold on, let me put it in front of you. Because, you know, he, he, he said a lot of very important things and I, and I really, uh, it just inspired me. And, 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 and as Karen said, you know, I'm a foreigner and Trevor's a foreigner and my wife, she's a foreigner too. And, um, I, I, I was a, a blogger recently wrote about me and my wife that we are the poster children for the decline of American morality. <laughs> and as I think that's an example of, of foreigners doing jobs Americans just won't do anymore. <laughs> Come on, you people. Get out there. So anyway, my name is Phelo McAleer and I'm a recovering European. <laughs> this is part of my 12-step program here. To, you know, I, le I came to America about 2007 to get away from a country where government owned the banks and government owned industry and government owned the healthcare and then Obama got elected. What happened? You know? So, um, so here, here we are. Um, you know, uh, we as me, like many foreigners, we love America, and I, you know, I always thinking here, you know, as I was listening to Trevor, why do I love America? And you know, you know, many many reasons, but I think the First Amendment is a is a wonderful thing, and you know, you don't have it in many other countries. There's many things that Americans don't realize how lucky you are. You know, you, I did a, a film about fracking. Do you know that America is the only country in the world where mineral rights belong to people, not to the crown, not to the government? So if you if you own land in in Ireland, and the government decides that they want the the, the the government can just sell your mineral rights to an oil company, and the oil company can come on and drill for oil, and you get nothing. You know, so you know th 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 this is why fracking succeeded. One of the reasons, but this, this there's so many things that make America special, and the First Amendment. You can get put in prison for a tweet in the UK. You know, you can you can get hauled up before tribunals in Australia for 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 journalism, high courts. So, so that's I think Karen said we wanted to tell the truth, and that's you know the First Amendment is is can protect liars, but it can certainly protect telling the truth, and that's what we've been trying to do. Um, you know, when when I saw hands up, don't shoot. When I saw all the Ferguson stuff. I actually did something that many people don't do. I went and I read all 5,000 pages of the Ferguson Grand Jury report. Not the report, the actual eyewitness testimony. And I realized there was a story there that hadn't been told, that wasn't in the media. So what I did was I took the 5,000 pages and I condensed it into a, a play, a, an hour and a half, an hour and a quarter. And it's basically the last couple of hours of Michael Brown's life. Uh, before he met his end, and it was eyewitness testimony. Many of the many of the eyewitnesses were African Americans, and they all said the same thing: that the hands up, shoot, don't shoot thing never happened. It never happened, and uh, and I thought that was worth worth bringing to the public. So I I, I wrote a play. I only used people's verbatim testimony. I didn't add anything. There was no Katie Couric style editing. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Um, for dramatic pauses, um, I'm trying to get that. I'm trying to get that phrase into the American uh, lexicon. By the way, Couric style editing. So use it every chance you can. Let's get a new word into the English language. Do a Couric on it, All right? So I didn't do a Couric on it, and uh, when we went, I hired these actors, and they were so excited to be working on the Ferguson project because actors are so brave and so courageous, don't you know? So they arrived there uh, for the first rehearsal and read through the play. And after the first rehearsal, five of them walked out. After the second rehearsal, four of them walked out. Only thank you, there was 13 members of the cast, nine walked out. Yeah. I was going, but this is verbatim. This is African Americans saying what they saw. And they were going, no, no, it can't be true. It can't be true. Or I don't want it to be true. Or I don't know. Or I'm, I'm going to have to receive a bravery award. That's why I'm being a coward right now. Or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, you know, they were so busy awarding themselves bravery awards, they forgot to do any, something brave. So nine of them walked out, 
and I hired more, and some of them walked out. So eventually I got a cast and put it on, and it was wonderful. And it was a play, and I could see people in the audience straining for every word because they knew this was the truth. The truth is very important. The truth is very compelling. And, and that's why we did the Gosnell story as well. A lot of the Gosnell film is coming out next year. It's based entirely on verbatim transcripts of the trial. And some of, the, some of it is so awful that we had to change, we had to sort of do a reverse curric on it. How to make it less dramatic than the truth because people wouldn't believe it. So, so you know, that's what the First Amendment gives us is, is, the, is the ability to tell the truth, even unpopular truths. Because if you don't have a First Amendment, you have government truths. You have official truths that are not truths. Like on New Year's Day, uh, in Sweden or Germany, it was 500 women were sexually assaulted. Media didn't report it for three days. The police didn't report it. They they released a press release saying, "Ah, oh, another happy day in Germany where the fireworks went off to welcome in the new year." But of course, they tried to suppress the the the, the reality of of Muslim immigrants sexually assaulting women. So, you know, be very grateful that you have it. Let me just see. Um, and that, yes, and that's why we're doing the Hillary emails as well, actually, is because I don't know if you're familiar with the project. It's called Clinton emails on film. So Hillary, Hillary um, staff, there was a freedom of information request for Hillary's emails and Huma Abedin's emails and all that. And the group asking for it was told, oh, no, you can't. There are no emails. And they thought, that's a bit strange. And of course, it emerged that all of them were using private emails. So there were no emails because they were all sitting in a, in a server in her basement in New York. Can you believe that? She had a server in a Gmail had better security than Hillary Clinton, and I mean that. You know, if you, your average Gmail account is reasonably secure. They had clintonemail.com wow. in, in the basement of her New York residence, you know? So, um, you know, so we... So a judge gave uh, the, the Judicial Watch, this organization, the permission to depose under oath Hillary's senior staff. Uh, and Hillary's lawyers went to the judge and said, yeah, you can do, that's great, you can depose them. And uh, we know it's going to be video recorded, but we are asking that the tips of, of, of these depositions be suppressed until after the election because they could be used for nefarious purposes. <laughs> I'm shocked that they would think they'd be used for nefarious purposes. Yeah. Well, obviously, the, in the Clinton world, you see the truth is, a nefarious, is, is something uh -huh. nefarious. So the judge, who was appointed by Hillary Clinton's husband, agreed with them. So the tapes are now suppressed and sealed till after the election. However, the transcripts have been released. So what we've done is we've got Hollywood actors, and we're, we're recreating the depositions uh, and, and we're putting them on YouTube. I mean, they're amazing. I'm just, I just took a note of the, of the figures. Cheryl Mills, is, uh, Hillary's chief of staff, during the deposition, used the words, I don't know or I don't recall, 189 times. <laughs> Stephen Mull, he couldn't recall 125 times. Brian Pagliano, when asked, uh, where are you working now, pleaded the Fifth Amendment. Uh, uh, <laughs> he pleaded, and, and then he pleaded, con continued to plead the Fifth, uh, fifth Amendment 100, over 100 times. I mean, the Clintons, if, if it wasn't for how, for how serious it is, it's one of the, the, the it's, a fu it's funny, it's hilarious. I mean, actually, the, I, mean I, I find people laughing at those, at those videos. So you can go and find those on, on Clinton emails on film.com. So, you know, I, I, the truth is very, very important. And uh, I, I think we've got to just, I think Trevor said it well at the end. Where is Trevor? He said it very well at the end. You know, you've got to fight, folks. I know it's tough. I know it's tough. I know, you, I know, I know, you know. We decided that the censorship, actually, we decided the censorship stopped here, but actually, to be fair, many of you have fought because we crowdfund our um, endeavors. And I know many of you here have, have given to the Gosnell Project. And I know many of you here have given to the Clinton Emails on Film Project uh, and, to, and to the Ferguson play as well, because some of you came to the Ferguson play. So, I mean, th that's one thing you can do, but you, you, can, do, you can do many other things, you know. Uh, you know. You got to fight every. You got to fight over your over your garden fence. You got to argue over your garden fence. Keep telling people. You, you got to argue online. You got to argue on Facebook. 
arguing at Thanksgiving even I know I know I know that's difficult to argue at Thanksgiving no I know it's not but I mean actually talking at Thanksgiving I mean as Trevor was saying we love America because we recognize that this is the last great hope but um, one thing about America you, you know you, I love America but you have some traditions I don't like okay I'm gonna say it sorry I'm gonna just a little bit of criticism of America here one or two traditions I don't like. One of them is light beer. <laughs> it's disgusting. It's disgraceful. It needs to be stopped right now. Yeah. I'll vote for that. A Trump put that on his ticket. i vote for that. Light beer. Where did that come from? It's a person who invented that should be deported. He should be deported. <laughs> Even if he's an American. I'd make an exception. I, I go to university and I tell the kids, just take drugs. Don't. Please do not take light beer. <laughs> no. Sorry, I don't do that. Drugs are bad, kids. Drugs are bad. <laughs> anyway, sorry. I'm getting a little bit distracted there, but it's a very important matter of principle about light beer. So, and then the other tradition you have is that you pay, your ch that you pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for your kids to go off to college, and then they come back at Thanksgiving and tell you how stupid you are. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, so anyway, when they come back, you know, argue with them. Don't worry, they'll, you know, as they get older, they'll get wiser, and uh, one day they'll thank you. But, you know, so take them to the transcripts of the Hillary emails. To, uh, take them to, 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 to show them. That we put the Ferguson play online. No, just go to the transcripts. Actually, just produce the facts, uh, and you'll be very, very surprised. You know, eventually, uh, they will, they will uh, reality will hit home. So, um, you know... It is, this, is, this is a very, very important time. Um, I think Trevor said it better than I can. You've got to keep fighting. We know that you've put a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of effort in. This is a very important six months. Please keep doing it. Please keep fighting. Fight on Facebook. Fight on Twitter. Fight with the enemy, not, not with, your, with your friends. I know that this has been a brutal primary, but, uh, yes. you know, just, just look at Hillary, please. You know, and... Uh, Think, think about what, you know, is, the, is, is any alternative uh, worse than that? And the answer is no, you know. Um, so, please, uh, you know, Avi, Avi was, you know, he, call, as he called it the American Freedom Alliance. And uh, it's, you, you've no idea, I mean, I just can't tell you how important America is for freedom-loving people across the world. There are people getting up every morning in Africa and Asia who, who, just, who looked to this as an example of how their country should be. And you go, it's, it's well worth, it's, 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 it's important, not for you people, because you're going to be okay. It's important for generations here and generations elsewhere that you preserve and improve what you've got here in this wonderful experiment. So please, fight on, uh, fight in memory of Avi and fight for America. Thank you. Yeah.